Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is a place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. <laughs> train today. Jethro around? He's cutting wood. I'll fetch him. Get up from there. You don't need a haircut. <laughs> Thank you, 
Johnny. You're the greatest. Ain't that the truth? Keep the line moving. My mother and I got on the train in Salt Lake City, but it's taken all this time to get back here to your car. Crazy. Keep the line moving. I'm president of your Omaha Fast Club. Like, wow. We took up a collection so I could come out and see you at the Hollywood Bowl. You got a ticket? No, not yet. Here you go. That'll be five bucks. All right, girls, the train's coming into Los Angeles. Everybody out. Oh, no. Uh, you can see Johnny at the Hollywood Bowl. Now, come on, back to your own cars. Your parents are probably looking for you. And keep buying my records, you hear? And them Johnny Pope guitars, and Johnny Pope sweatshirts, and Johnny Pope charm bracelets, and anything else got my name on it. Okay, Johnny, time to get into the old clothes. Oh, man, I don't want to do that front yard bit again. Listen, you got 10,000 screaming teenagers waiting for you at the L.A. station. I'll let them have a thrill. I kind of like them girls grabbing at me. <laughs> and I've got a contract to deliver you to the Hollywood Bowl in one piece. Now, you do as I tell you. Just a minute, Mr. Manager. You are talking to Johnny Pope, the greatest singer ever to come out of the hills. Listen, you gully jumper. You take away your echo chamber, the guy who plays the guitar for you, the ten-piece band, a quarter of a million dollars worth of publicity, and my brains, and you'll be back in the hills where I found you calling hearts. Now, get into those clothes. You're getting off at the front yard, as always. Shame on you, you naughty puppy. Put your cousin down. <laughs> cousin? Never mind. Well, you never liked a puppy in your kitchen. Don't call him a puppy. It was me calling him one that started all this mess. <laughs> what mess? Do as I say, child. Don't push me and don't rile me. My powers today are something fearful. Well, don't you want to take the little critter back to his mom? No, 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 no. I don't want Pearl to see him looking like this. Well, you talking about Aunt Pearl? Never mind now, child. Run along and leave this boy to poor old Granny. I've got a humdinger of a spell to break. <laughs> way to travel, but when your pockets is empty, that's a good place to put your pride. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Well, how do you like that manager of mine? I'm making $30,000 a week traveling in a private car, and he lets me get off the trains out of dime in my pocket. You don't have to put on airs with us, Johnny. <laughs> we, your friends, we all go. We don't care if you're busted. You're busted? Man, I'm rich. <laughs> oh, you think these are my clothes? No, no, I just wear these to get away from the girls. I got 50 suits on board that train. I got suits made out of gold, out of silver. Alligator, snakeskin, you name it, I got it. Uh, what train is that, Johnny? Uh, you mean this one? No, man. That big silver streamliner, the Johnny Pogue Special. <laughs> well, it's gone now. <laughs> Along with your 50 suits, huh? Johnny, I think you're on the fever. Man, he'll be all right quick as he gets his belly full of Granny's grits and jowls. Come on. Grits <laughs> and jowls? Man, I don't eat nothing but steaks that thick. I got a special cook travels with me every place I go. Is he on that silver train that run off with your silver suit? <laughs> yeah. You see, I couldn't ride into the Los Angeles station because there's 10,000 girls there waiting for me. And they are all crazy about me. <laughs> well, come on, Connor. Come on where? Home with us. Now, don't you worry, Jethro. I've done fucked up some of my most powerful spell-busting powders. I'll have you back to a boy in no time. <laughs> Magic powder, white as snow. Bring back the one that I love so. Eye of a newt, tail of a toad. Bust up the spell that I done so. <laughs> yes, Ro, I've done everything I can. I've got to call on a higher power for help. Don't you worry, everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> I know I don't deserve it. I've been honorary and short-tempered. 
But if you turn that puppy dog back into Jethro, I'll mend my ways. I'll be kind and gentle, and I won't do no complaining. <laughs> You must have got into the flower. I'd best get you out of here before Granny sees the mess you made. <laughs> and I won't drink none of my rheumatiz medicine without I got an honest-to-goodness twinge. <laughs> and I won't scrap with Miss Drysdale. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I told you I ain't staying here. I'm going to the hotel and have me a party. Now, I promised your ma I'd find you and look out for you. First thing you need is some good hot vittle. First thing I need is a good stiff belt. <laughs> well, if that's what it's going to take, I'll just do you some good at that. I'm staying, I'm staying. Don't you remember, Jethro? A tall boy. About so high. Lots of thick black hair. Real handsome. And the nicest young one you'd ever want to meet. If you ain't already. <laughs> straight to the hotel. Where are you? You ain't gonna believe this, Eddie, but I don't know where I am. <laughs> now, you listen to me, Johnny Polk. You get over to this hotel and sober up. I ain't touched a drop, and I'll be there quick as I can make it. I sure got no reason to hang around here. Hi there, Johnny. Remember me? I'm Allie May. We used to wrestle when we was little. I hear a girl's voice. That means trouble. You've got a show to do tonight. Now, get over here. Cool it, Eddie. I'll see you at the boat. <laughs> so you're little Ellie. Grace to tell you the bills will be ready directly. Oh, crazy. <laughs> but Paul says, first, you've got to write a letter to your mom. Well, I'd rather wrestle. Well, Paul says I ain't supposed to do that no more. <laughs> Just everything you need. Uh, honey, I don't write so good. Oh, well, I'll write it for you. <laughs> tell me what to say. Oh, baby. Do you, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and speaking of that, I still ain't in no hurry if you ain't. And I've mended my ornery ways like I promised. Now, Granny, I know how you feel about Johnny Polk, but I hope you don't go to whomping him right off. What? I grant you he needs it. That boy tramples on the truth worse than he did back home. He was such a liar then, he used to have to get somebody else to call his dog for him. <laughs> Are you talking about sweet, lovable, hard-working Johnny Polk? Oh, I'm talking about lazy, good-for-nothing Johnny Polk. This boy used to lay around the cabin so much his ma had to dust him. He said it. I didn't. Who are you talking to? Uh -uh, nobody. Jed, can't you say anything good about Johnny Polk? Well, yes, I can. Fears like he'd give up singing. He even got rid of his guitar. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry? Granny, that boy used to sing so bad that Tomcats would throw things at him. He said it. I didn't. What's that one about? Uh, uh, the young uns of today, Jed. Oh, I love them all. They're so sweet and good and kind and well-behaved. Have you got into your rheumatism medicine? No. I took the pledge. Cross my heart. I ain't had a drop. <laughs> now, Johnny, stop that nibbling on my ear. Paul says you can't have vittles till you get this letter up. This letter, baby. Let's have a little action. Let's watch two see. Let's watch? What two see? Well, how about the crew? <laughs> Swim? Oh, yeah. We gotta see Mid Pond out back. Baby, how can you look so round and be so square? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Johnny. Well, forget about it, honey. I don't dig those new jumping around steps too much myself. Give me the good old days when we used to hang on to one another. Remember this? I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, you 
can't wrestle no more. That's how it ain't. I whooped him quicker than I used to. Hey, ladylike. Well, he started it. Well, he did, did he? Yes, sir. He says, let's have a little action. Well, we might just do that. <laughs> hey, then, how long I got to split wood? Until you earn this $10 to send back home to your mom? Listen, Mr. Clanton, you get me to my hotel and I'll send more $10,000. I'd rather have ten of these and ten million of them dream dollars you keep talking about. I mean, I use those to light cigars. I'm worth a million dollars. I got six gold records. Four secretaries do nothing but answer my fan mail. There's Johnny Polk record players, Johnny Polk guitar, Johnny Polk picture books. All on that silver train, huh, boy? <laughs> now, hold on, Granny. You ain't going along with my guitar, are you? Why, I ain't going to want that sweet young'un. I want to hear him play and sing. You what? <laughs> that ought to buy me a few extra days. <laughs> well, uh, you've been bragging a lot. Uh, you show us something, you won't have to chop no more wood. Here, you can keep this. Man, you're on. Now, this here's the song that made me famous. <laughs> well, I'm a dragster's whale, and I'm a rocket tail, and I'm a fog and sail. Have a great big helping of me. <laughs> You didn't hear me at my best, Granny. I thought you was fine, Johnny. I didn't have no microphone out there, and I didn't have no electric guitar. You was just dead. <laughs> you ought to hear me with the echo chamber and a great big band and chorus backing me up. I'd flip you. I'm so good, I'd flip myself. <laughs> I'll take your word for it, Johnny. <laughs> you ought to see the way the girls fight one another just get close to me. Thousands of them screaming, we want Johnny. Johnny's the king. <laughs> when I commence singing, they swoon with joy. And then when I'm done singing, they trample one another to autograph. I have to fight my way through a solid wall. The girls get my limousine. Yeah, Granny, I'm the greatest. Give me that, you young whippersnapper. Now, you sit down. I'm going to tell you a few things. Sorry, Granny, i got to get to the blow. When I say sit, you sit. <laughs> Assassin, young scallywag. Now, there's one that wants punishing. <laughs> you ain't got the manners of a hermit. Time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. And they would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. <laughs>